Hi there, welcome to part two of module three. We're continuing our conversation about the internet, digital media, and media convergence. And we now enter uh, the most recent decade where we can explore some of the interesting twists and turns that um, internet convergence has taken. So there are some things that we might never have imagined. Uh, in the last part of module three, we talked about remote learning and the uh, challenges that we have in defining who's connected or who's underconnected, and the notion that no longer is there a clear um, dichotomous digital divide, you're on or you're off, but instead there's a continuum. We can think also about various ways that uh, the internet has brought people together toward collective action. So I like to use the example of the ice bucket challenge, and you could probably think of more recent examples as well. But the ice bucket challenge is an interesting one, um, in part because it was so viral. It just took off in so many countries with so many different demographic groups from, from kids to politicians from celebrities in the US to singers in China. So it was, it's very interesting to see um, how this impetus to do this funny thing on video could also potentially be connected to philanthropy or to um, individuals giving small donations. Now, uh, the Ice Bucket Challenge wasn't solely um, connected to ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. It also had other um, other functions prior to also was called the cold water challenge in the in like around 2010. But with the ALS ice bucket challenge, the idea was that within 24 hours after being challenged, you had to either um, accept the challenge and pour a bucket of ice over your head. Or if you rejected the challenge, you had to pay 100 bucks. Um, and there were various iterations of it. Um, some people set, would pay $100 no matter what. Um, other people, you know, paid $10. So there was this um, other version that was really popular with kids where it was just like you just dump ice water over your head in lieu of donation. But the original goal was to raise money to help fight this disease. And it was, um, it took off in large part because there was this interesting visual nature to it, but also because it was something that really fed into the social media platforms that were um, really taking off among youth. One of the things that um, the Ice Bucket Challenge highlights is, and, and if you're wondering who this is, this is Kevin Hart, who's a comedian who, who did the Ice Bucket Challenge. But um, the Ice Bucket Challenge also highlighted for some the idea that if you do some small thing that takes very little effort, you feel like you've done something large. Um, and scholars have come to call this slacktivism or slacker and activism. And that's um, the practice of supporting a political or a social cause. Um, by means such as social media that's characterized by very little effort. So some people will feel like they're very politically engaged if they sign an online petition, whereas, uh, and, and that can sometimes take the place of more significant political engagement like um, voting or fundraising. So um, interesting intersection between social activism and, um, and internet presence. Another kind of activism is hashtag activism. And this is described in your book. I think they use the example of Black Lives Matter or, and also Occupy Wall Street. But he, at Rutgers University, there uh, was a very interesting movement where, and we'll define it here, before the hashtag, before a phrase, um, can quickly communicate a larger idea or event or cause, right? So if you're on Twitter and you hashtag something, then you're signaling a shorthand for something bigger, and maybe it's an event or maybe it's a cause. And at Rutgers, there was a um, very interesting and important um, uh, professor of emergency medicine who kind of took on the NRA. So the NRA, come, the National Rifle Association, 
the NRA came out and, um, and tweeted that someone should tell self-important anti-gun doctors to stay in their lane. And then uh, they went on to write that half the articles in Annals of Internal Medicine are pushing for gun control. Mo mo most upsetting, they write, however, uh, the medical community seems to have consulted no one but themselves, right? So this is a, uh, a tweet from NRA that was answered by hashtag activism, uh, specifically in the form of Stephanie Boone, hashtag uh, activism. This is my lane. So as an emergency medicine doc, Stephanie would tweet photos that had the hashtag, this is my lane, this is our lane. And she would um, show pictures of um, victims of gun violence, um, the aftermath of victims of gun violence. Of course, she would show the victims themselves, but um, also how it affected her and her having to tell families when, when um, victims die. So that is an interesting movement, and it highlights the um, kind of the innovative ways that digital communication, as as experienced through the internet, allows um, all kinds of media content to be created by people like Stephanie or the NRA, um, but also by you know everyday users like um, like adolescents who are pouring buckets of ice over their head. The notion of convergence, right, which we've been talking about for the last couple of modules, is this idea that there is a merging of content in different mass media, visual, audio, movies, television shows, magazine content, newspaper content, that often ends up in one space, specifically um, the internet. And the internet as the hub of convergence is suggests that this is a place where we really need to be focusing a lot of our, our interests. But specifically because of how we are, many of us are now accessing the internet, um, mobile devices are also ones that we need to understand and ones that we need to understand within the context of how they're propelling convergence. So I asked you in the um, part one of module three to think about different aspects of the internet. Um, I, I know I asked you to think about whether or not if you haven't experienced it, tweeted it or shared it through um, social media, did it really happen? Here I want you to think about why it matters, why convergence matters, why mobile devices that facilitate convergence matters. And we have to think about it from the perspective of how it's changed our relationship with media, but also how it's changed our relationship with the internet. And again, these are two questions that are pondered within the textbook. I want you to think about them um, more deeply and, and see how the textbook answers them. One way we can think about how it's changed us um, these devices and our constant connected connection to them is through what's called the semantic web. You might say to yourself, well, what is the semantic web? Is it a web that responds remotely to your requests? Is it a web that translates languages accurately and simultaneously? Is it a web that places basic information of the web into meaningful categories like friends, family, calendars, location, and, and makes connections for us? Or is it a device called the Nest that operates your home for you? So only one of those answers is correct. Just take a moment and see if you can think about what that answer is. So the answer is that the semantic web is a web that places basic information of um, the web into meaningful categories and makes those connections for us. Sorry, that shouldn't be a question mark, it should be a period. Okay, so coming up in module four, we are going to read chapter five. We're moving into sound recording and popular music, and we'll think about sound recording in many of its iterations from music to podcasts. And also uh, next week, we will be screening our first documentary, and you will be writing a reflection paper about that documentary. So stay tuned for information about that. That will be released on Monday as well. 
So I hope that um, this module is interesting for you. Now that you have finished it, make sure that you watch the TED Talk, the John Stewart clip, review the PowerPoint slides, and head on over to the quiz. Good luck.